Podcast 9B is a continuation of a discussion of vision disorders, as was Podcast 9A. The goal of this podcast are several. An explanation of the popular term ADD, ADHD. Further discussion of vision disorders and an explanation of the relationship between vision and performance, vision and the emotions, vision and learning, and an assignment. In, 18, in the 1860s, Paul Broca, a French anatomist, described the term acquired aphasia which happened to people who had a stroke on the left side of the brain affecting the speech center that later became known as Broca's speech center. Subsequently, through uh, now almost 150 years, 160 years, many other terms have been used to describe what Broca originally found and that was just on a few people. And I want you to pay particular attention to the last two terms, minimum brain dysfunction, which was changed to attention deficit disorder, attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder, because parents did not like the term minimum brain dysfunction being labeled onto their children. As just mentioned, the, the, the terms have changed. Dyslexia was very popular in the 50s and 60s, and then later in the 60s, minimum brain damage, and then now ADD, ADHD. Here's two problems with labels. One, the Hawthorne effect occurs if a person believes that his performance is supposed to improve during the treatment and conversely if they believe that it's going to decrease it may well decrease if it's if they're given a label <clears throat> that says they are not effective learners or effective performers secondly the rosenthal effect occurs if the experimented teacher or parent believes that certain people are supposed to improve or uh, not improve during the treatment. So there's uh, many stories about the teachers being given a class and were told that these were the best students in the school and they ended up being that way. And conversely, if a teacher is told that his uh, students are the lowest in the whole school, their grades will not be very good. One of the vision disorders we did not discuss, discuss last podcast is nystagmus, which are uh, oscillating movements of the eye, typically horizontal, but can occur in uh, other directions as well. And it's usually related to a disturbance in the balance mechanism. Macular degeneration is where the center of our vision, the macula, starts to have problems, particularly uh, people as they get older because of blood circulation and other kinds of age-related problems. Amblyopia is more commonly known as lazy eye, and it usually occurs when people are not looking with the very center of the fovea, the fovea is the very center of the macular, where we have our very clear vision and we see colors as well. The optic nerve connects the eye to the brain and this graphic illustrates the effects of our training on people who have lost function due to 
damage or trauma to the optic nerve. This just reinforces that many physical problems are treatable and we don't give up hope on people until we're sure that we've tried every pathway for healing. And the same occurs with the brain. Um, and this illustrates someone who had damage to their brain and lost half of their vision in both eyes. And the training restored the vision. We're not exactly sure how it happened, but there's different theories of brain function. One is that every cell in the brain can perform the function of other cells. Obviously, pilots need to have exceptional vision. Through the screening process, they end up uh, employing pilots who do have exceptional vision, uh, particularly military jet fighter pilots. Not only can they see clearly, but they can see things in slow motion, such as U.S. Navy pilots landing on an aircraft carrier. A very difficult task unless you see it in slow motion. Another illustration of slow motion perception is in athletics. And here, Roger Withrow, former world champion in the air rifle, says that he can see the bullet going through the paper target. Color vision is another aspect of our vision, as mentioned uh, previously. And we can test color vision. And in some cases, we can correct some color vision defects. In the last podcast, we discussed glaucoma, and that's where the eye pressure is very high. And these graphs illustrate that after uh, the biofeedback training, we can actually lower the eye pressure and eliminate, in some cases, the diagnosis of glaucoma. This graphic is quite complicated, but simply that vision is not just seeing the 2020 line, but it involves many conscious and subconscious processes. The blue circles are conscious processes, and the green circles are subconscious processes. And for more information about this, you could go to the hypothalamus video. Concentration simile is <clears throat> involving both conscious and subconscious processes. And this is how we are able to affect people's learning through their vision. <clears throat> Here is a graph of what happens when the brain waves relax. And here we see that the alpha brain waves, those in blue, as uh, they increase the line on the bottom, where it says EMG, it becomes lower and lower. And that happens as the focusing muscle relaxes, which is on the middle graph. And the red lines, when they go higher, are related to the relaxation and the alpha brain wave increase. This is what we call in the zone. Fifty years ago, I published an article on vision and learning, which showed a few things. One, that as your age in school increased, the incidence of vision problems increased, and the vision problems are related to our reading ability and our overall academic ability. Here's another article 
a little over 20 years ago, explaining the same thing, but uh, with more information available. It was from 1972 to 2000. There were a lot of discoveries that help us understand how our brain works. One of the hot topics is autism. And here in 2007, the New York Times uh, published an article that maybe it isn't autism, maybe it's just seeing double. And almost in all cases of patients like this, we can restore their vision to single vision and get rid of the autistic diagnosis. For an assignment, reflect on your vision and learning relationship. Recall your best performance and rehearse the feeling and memory to apply it to other situations. Are some topics easier to learn than others? What is your favorite vision-related activity? All of this is to help you learn that vision is more than just seeing something clearly. If there's any questions or anyone would like additional information, here's the way to contact me.